academic historians generally think very poorly of the Assassin's Creed series. Some historians argue that the game's blend of historical facts and fictions reduce people's ability to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Other historians argue that the game sanitizes history by skating over racialized, gendered, and class-based forms of oppression throughout the past. And yet other historians argue that since the game makers were primarily concerned with selling copies rather than representing accurate history, they produced a version of history that catered to the ideological worldviews of its primarily white male audience. In this video, however, I argue that such historians are too concerned about historical accuracy and ignore Assassin's Creed's engagement with deeper historical questions around how and if history should be used or abused. I'm Dr. Darren Reed, and this is History Through Games Assassin's Creed Edition. Thank you for tuning in. I'm a historian at McGill University, and this is a new video series I'm experimenting with to use video games to explore complex historical debates, concepts, or themes. And I really want this video series to become a collaboration with all of you. In fact, the only reason I'm doing a video on Assassin's Creed is because two of you suggested it. So please, let me know your thoughts in the comments on this video, on the series as a whole, you can give me any suggestions on games to play or historical themes to explore so that I can shape this series around your interests. The plotline running through all the Assassin's Creed games is that a giant corporation called Abstergo Industries is harvesting people's genetic memories to find the locations of hidden artifacts which it can use to control society. Now, using historical memories to gain power in the present is clearly an abuse of history. And while harvesting genetic memories is clearly fictional, it gets at a question that historians have been asking for centuries about how and if history can or should be used or abused in the present. And to give you an example, look at this debate that occurred in 2005. One historian named Dirk Moses published an article calling out another historian named Hayden White for encouraging genocidal political parties to abuse history in service of their genocidal politics. According to Dirk Moses, Hayden White believed that the best use of history was to create mythological narratives that can give social groups and social movements collective identity and purpose. From such a perspective, History is made usable to human society by bending our knowledge of the past into whatever we need to believe about ourselves in the present. Dirk Moses, however, argued that this was a perversion of the historical profession. For Moses, it was not the job of the historian to provide people with identity or purpose, but rather to challenge political abuses of history with objective, evidence-based, scientific historical facts. Thus, rather than generating mythological narratives to provide people with a sense of cohesion, the historian's job is to tear apart those mythological narratives and remind people of what actually happened. In response, Hayden White published his own article calling out Dirk Moses for naively assuming that history can ever be studied objectively. White argued that the idea that history can be studied scientifically or objectively was a myth created in the 19th century. That scientific history can tell us boring things like somebody's name or something that a person did or when somebody died, but that objective history can never tell us why somebody was historically significant. That in order to determine significance, we as historians have to make decisions about what we think is important or not important, and we make those decisions based on our own ideological values. Thus, according to Hayden White, all historians use history to further their own ideological agendas, whether intentionally or not. And White argues that Dirk Moses's idea that historians can police 
political abuses of history is merely pitting one ideological use of history against another. This debate between Moses and White is only one recent example of a century-old debate. Going back a little bit further, another example is Friedrich Nietzsche's essay on the uses and abuses of history for life, published back in 1874. Nietzsche argued that when history is used too much, it can stagnate society by making us get stuck in worshipping or condemning the past so much that we forget how to live in the present. And for Nietzsche, one of the best things that historians can do is help society forget aspects of its past that are not helping it live in the present. And this debate is far from over. Only a few years ago, Sarah Gensberger and Sandrine Lefranc published a fascinating book where they argued that modern attempts to use memory of past atrocities like the Holocaust to promote uh, peace and tolerance and reduce racism have all failed. And they question whether the history or memory can ever really be used to promote universal humanity or whether history can only be used to further particular political agendas. So you see, through exploring Abstergo Industries' abuse of genetic memories to find ancient artifacts and take over the world, the Assassin's Creed series engages in a debate over the use and abuse of history that has been fundamental to the historical profession for over a century and continues to go on to this day. But what do you think? Can history ever be used to good purpose, or is it always subject to abuse? Can history ever be studied objectively, or are historians inherently subjective? And what about the use of history in Assassin's Creed? Do you agree with many historians that the game abuses history for commercial gain, or do you think Assassin's Creed offers something that historians haven't acknowledged yet? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I want this whole series to develop in collaboration with you. So please let me know any feedback, any comments, any suggestions for future videos, and I will respond to you in the comments and in future videos. But that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Farewell!